Good morning people. It's Tuesday. Unusually for me, I respected the bank holiday and didn't come in. And I've got plunder. This is a three phase hydraulic pump with all its control gear and its uh, up down valve and uh, its starter box. And as you can probably see, it's off a TI Bradbury lift, four post car lift, 4,000 kilo, four metric tons. Right, so that I'm hoping is going to be the base is basis of a, a press which I want to build uh, or put together more than build. Uh, I might be able to get an old press frame uh, with a, with or without RAM, I'm not sure yet uh, and uh, turn it into a press, but a press is something I could do with I could have used a press to press those push rod tubes out really This is just a little experiment this motor, this is a DC motor, DC 2 speed uh, motor of some sort, it's not uh, a permanent magnet one it's got uh, electric magnets in it if you like uh, it's out of a Samsung washing machine uh, I got it off the same chap and he wants me to have a look at it and see if I can get it to work uh, according to the spec on it it's uh, 90 volt uh, for the low speed and 230 or 220 volts for the high speed uh, so it's obviously a wash speed and a spin speed so that shouldn't be too difficult, it just needs a DC power supply uh, there was an inverter with it uh, which also came out of the washing machine but unfortunately he cut the wiring harness and uh, looking at the inverter, the inverter was part of the entire electronics for the machine so we'd be better off just getting a dedicated power supply I think. Anyway, there you go. What else? What else? Oh, some metal. Some metal. Some bags of bags of metal. It came from uh, down at Keith's parents' house. I'll sort those out later. Some uh, some bits of rebar, etc., etc. All sorts of useful bits of steel. And. Uh, I think we can claim a hundred percent victory with the uh, inner tubes because that's uh, after three days stood inflated and uh, they're all up. Now do you see the difference in the size of the tyres? Right? Supposedly all those inner tubes fit the same tyre. Right? This is the one I bought new which I promptly stuck a tyre lever through. Uh, and the other three are ones that I've taken out of tyres of the same size. Well, we've got four good inner tubes to go out now. So now I'm going to attempt to put one of the bigger ones back in that tyre, that new tyre, and back on this wheel. But I'm not doing it at the moment because over the weekend my mother's uh, automatic washing machine flooded her kitchen. And so I'm now getting my tools and on my way up there to sort it out. I have just also blown the tyres up on the car which I had a flat tyre, well a flattish tyre at the front. So I'm going to get on with that and when something interesting happens I will bring you back. So there you go, another nice view of a three phase hydraulic pump. Bye for now peeps. Afternoon people, Wednesday, I've got back from Beverly, uh, she's had a dental appointment and the uh, the length of 2CV pushrod tube factory is back in full swing again. Uh, I'm now working with three quarter uh, diameter tube, three quarter inch, which needs reducing, uh, which is it's about 19.1 millimeters, and uh, I'm reducing it to 18 millimeters. But first, I've put the pushrod uh, tube seal end on, reduce that end. I've already bored the internal diameter out. The next job is to cut it to length and then turn it round 
bar out the other end and then finally reduce the outside uh, outside diameter. In fact I might reduce the outside diameter, I'll reduce the outside diameter first because I can do that on the length of pipe. Uh, so I'll mark off the length and then I'll reduce the outside diameter to 18mm and then I'll cut it off. Sensible. Okay, I'll bring you back when I've got some nice push on tubes made. I'm sure you don't want to watch me. Well, maybe you do want to watch me turning, but uh, there's loads and loads of, of YouTube uh, video of people using lathes and turning stuff, you know, making things. The problem is, with, with the GoPro, I don't have a zoom. And so I can't get you close into the action. And if I put you anywhere on the uh, lathe itself, the camera microphone picks up horrendous noise and vibration. So I'm not going to show you the turn, I'm just going to show you the finished item. When I get a better camera, right, I can rig up something so that I can zoom in onto this area, possibly from up here, up here somewhere, and then you will get a better shot. But for now, this is what you're going to get. There you go, people. Gently nibbling away at the aluminium tube which is three quarter to get it down to 18 mil so it's 19.1 ish down to 18 mil there you are you've had a turning shot needless to say i am not winding the handle okay bring you back later and there it is folks the finished product one push rod tube Bob through to the correct wall thickness with the, uh, the fancy bit for the seal on it. Right, so I've now got three. I need to make them another one tomorrow. The reason I didn't get the other one made today is because I've been called away once again to uh, assist with some other projects. Uh, it's just the end, the back end of the commando gardening. We had the estate agents around yesterday and... Uh, They've given Keith a price and he's happy with it, so it's going on the market. Uh, so I just have to help him move the last of the stuff and it's all done now. But it's uh, it's quarter past four, so I'm not going to start up and, and make another one now because I'd only brush it and when I brush it, I'd just make a cock up. So I shall leave it for today and I shall make another one tomorrow and then we shall fit them. Well, then we shall soften them first. We need to anneal them. When we've got, once we've got the correct wall thickness, which we have now, uh, we need to anneal them, then we need to fit them. That shouldn't be too difficult, he said, frantically looking for a piece of wood to touch. Right, that'll do for today. Catch you tomorrow. Bye for now, chaps. Thanks for watching. Good morning, people. Thursday morning, not early. Uh, Here's yesterday's uh, product, and this morning's job is to make another one, is to reduce that to that. I've already marked out 119 mil of it, and so we're going to go over to the lathe now and turn up the last push rod tube, and then crack on setting it back together. Uh, I've got another, another delivery this morning, this is the uh, valve stem oil seals and the push rod rubber seals. Uh, has arrived, they've arrived, but unfortunately I'm still waiting for the uh, piston ring compressor. So there you go, but there's still plenty we can do. Uh, so I'm going to go to the lathe now, crack on, and I'll bring you back when I'm set up. Bye now. Right folks, Thursday, 2 o'clock. We've got two push rod tubes fitted. They're not fitted permanently yet, they're just in place. We've got a hole drilled in between them uh, and tapped. M6 and I'm just setting to to make a little plate which fits over there which will be flushed down to the cylinder head and will be sort of spectacle shaped to retain the two push rod tubes uh, 
should they come loose should the heat get to them and come loose uh, this is just a bit of insurance really I shall have, I shall tab wash this bolt as well and Loctite it in but I shall make a tab washer to fit to it so it will be it will be firmly fixed uh, so that's state of play at the moment but as you can see we've got two push rod tubes in uh, I haven't annealed them yet I need to anneal them and then fit them with uh, with the lock with the Loctite uh, bearing with the not bearing retainer the retainer uh, and then I need to shape this now and then fit that on top but I need to remove some metal here so that it will sit flat to the cylinder head so I'm just on with that now so there we go it's beginning to shape up thank goodness right I'll bring you back later bye now there we go folks that's the first retainer just about made I have to just uh, fettle that a bit and just get it fitting perfectly but it's uh, it just needs a little more taking off it in places to get it to fit perfectly and it does actually uh, it actually pulls down to the shape of the cylinder head very well which means it won't be able to rotate either uh, I think when I make the second one I might fit it a bit tighter here so that it actually goes up against those lugs uh, those little castings and it can't rotate but there you go but that fits rather well and that's going to keep make sure that the push rod tubes can't pop up should the retainer let go so there you go right I'll bring you back when I've uh, finished it and I'm ready to fit it bye for now right folks there it is it fits and it even fits the punches down if I can there we go that was a bit tight on that push rod tube actually but they both fit in I actually did it the other way around with it Yep, there we go. So she's fitted. So I'm going to put a stud, a little stud sticking out of the cylinder head, lock tightened into the cylinder head. And then I'm going to put a nut on with a tab washer on it. So that will uh, fix that, and that will finally fix the push rod tubes in place. So there we go. So, next job is to do it on the same thing on the other cylinder head. So I shall get on with that now. Bring you back later. Right folks, last call Thursday evening. I'm just about to leave for home. I've got the second cylinder head uh, drilled and tapped. And I've started making the uh, the keeper which will be going on there. Which way is that? That way up. But probably that way around. I've started fitting it but, but I've not got done very much as yet. So I'm not sure which way around it goes. But anyway, there we are, we're on with the second one. First one's there, with the stud lock tighted into the cylinder head. Uh, I've still got to fit the push rod tubes finally, but I shall be doing that tomorrow, along with these two, I hope. So tomorrow's job is to anneal all four push rod tubes and then get them in the cylinder head with some Loctite on them and uh, use the bolt, the expansion bolts to expand them. Uh, and then crack on and start putting it back together. I hope my piston ring compass has come today. It may have done, it may not have done. Who knows? Right, I'll catch you all tomorrow. See you later, people. Bye bye now. Good morning, people. Friday. And we're on with making a little clip cover to hold the push rod tubes in. I'm just about to start. It's half past ten. Uh, then anneal the push rod tubes. Then, wash everything off and put it all together. And the piston ring compressor has come. So we're on. We're on for a reassemble. So I'm going to get stuck in and I'm going to bring you back when there's something good happening. Which will be when this project is finished. Bye for now. And there's number two fitted. Ready for the stud. And... Uh, a tab washer, two tab washers making, so we'll make two tab washers next. But that, studs, nuts and tab washers. That should keep that in position. Thank the Lord. Right, another bit of hand fitting done. Okay, I'll bring you back later when there's something else to show you. Bye now. 
All people sing the strains of the Hallelujah Chorus. They're in. The roll bolt expander works like a charm. This is the one for expanding the lower boss and I use this for expanding the upper boss and it works like a charm. As soon as, the, as, soon as you've softened the aluminium uh, you can see as you tighten the bolt you can see the uh, green sealer squeezing out around the, around the edge there and I've, I've foregone the tab washer in favour of a spring washer and a nylock nut. So I think that should be absolutely belt and braces and that should do the job. One cylinder head down and one to go. Thank goodness for that. I'll bring you back when I finish the other one. Bye now. See here? Annealing aluminium. This is not my idea. I pinched it off another website when I looked up annealing al aluminium on YouTube. Uh, get a sharpie or, or any other sort of felt writer it seems to work with this one this is a permanent marker cheapo cheapo from Lidl I think and scribble it on to the aluminium you want to soften and you warm it up moving your torch all the time don't concentrate on any one spot keep your torch moving until the black felt marker just starts to disappear and believe you me it does disappear right and when it just starts to disappear quench it and that's the job done right uh, I'll show you I'll show you Beginning to fade. That's it. Go from. And it makes a nice, healthy, quacking noise when you drop it in the water. And that's how to do it. Bring you back in a minute. The best 30 quid I ever spent. I've just used this to uh, clean up one of the exhaust valves. Uh, one of the exhaust valves on, on cylinder head number two was badly pitted, so we put the old uh, into action and uh, we put a new seat on the valve. And it ground it perfectly. I was very impressed with that. I haven't used it since I rebuilt it. Uh, but what a machine, eh? What a machine. Lovely, lovely. Look, it's still running. It's still running on the key nectar because I haven't put a plug on it yet. There you go. But it's certainly done the job. Even if it does leak a bit of coolant, who cares? Everything leaks coolant, doesn't it? Okay, bring you back later. Bye now. There we go, folks. Cylinder head number two done. Push rod tubes fitted and expanded. He said, dropping this under it. Not. And the little spectacle retainer fitted. Valves ground. And I'm going to leave those two now to uh, set over the weekend. I shall wash them off and reassemble them on Monday. Now I'm going to get ready to put the pistons and barrels back on the engine. So I'll bring you back when I'm doing that. Okay, bye now. Right, folks, the good book says, the good book Citroen says, and I agree, easiest way to do this is to put the piston into the barrel and then put the whole lot onto the Gudrun pin and put the circlip in. So piston ring compressor, piston ring compressor works very nicely. 
goods and pins in, pistons ready for fitting to the barrel. So that's what I'm going to do now. Slide in the goods and pin, put in the circlip, and that side's finished. Right, I'll bring you back when it's done. Bye for now. And there we go, folks. Barrel on, piston in, circlip fitted, little end oiled, piston oiled, barrel pushed home. So now we'll swap round and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Isn't this fun? It's going back together at long last. Catch you later. Well, that's it, folks. It's Friday, it's just gone four o'clock. I've got both barrels on and the engine's turning over lovely. I've taken the oil filler neck off because the oil filler neck on the 2CV serves two separate purposes. Uh, it has to condense the oil vapour and return it to the sump. Uh, I've taken it off and I've got it down here soaking in petrol to uh, soften all the oil and sludge inside it so I can get it out and give it a good clean. Uh, you can't strip them down unfortunately, you can but it means a lot of faffing about and then either brazing them back together or making another ring to hold them back together uh, but there you go so that's done hey up that's my brother Michael and I'm ready on Monday to reassemble the cylinder heads clean both cylinder heads down put the valves back in and uh, reassemble the engine so thanks for watching thanks for subscribing Give us a like, send us a comment, whatever, and I'll see you all next week. Bye now.